Welcome to Overwatch, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Time. Although I'm recording this, to be honest, a little bit later than I usually do these. Uh, I'm preparing for my trip to BlizzCon, and that's what this episode is going to be primarily about. I do also want to touch very briefly on Mercy and Anna, actually, as some of the developers, well, Jeff posted today that Anna's going to get a slight buff very soon, or at least they're planning to give her a slight buff to her damage output, making it go from 60 to 70, which I think is a lovely change because there's a, a nice little break point at 70. And if you aren't aware of like how to gauge a damage buff and like what it actually means, because like going from 60 to 70 doesn't sound amazing, but when you start considering what breakpoints it gives you, it's actually kind of interesting. So what 60 to 70 does is, well, 3 times 70 is 210, oftentimes. There's, there's some quick maths for you. Uh, while 4 times 60 is uh, 240. 3 times 60, of course, being 180. 180 isn't quite 200. 200 is a very important number in Overwatch, as I'm sure you all realise. So, therefore, it takes Anna 3 shots at 70 damage to kill a 200 hit point target, while it takes her uh, 4 shots to kill something at 200 hit points with 60 damage. Very, very important numbers to understand. 70 is also quite nice because the grenade, uh, I believe, does 80 damage. And so if you do 80 damage plus 70 damage, you'll oftentimes find that adds up to 150. How much? How many hit points does Tracer have? 150. So hey, there's a nice little break point there as well. If you land a single shot plus a grenade, you're going to kill Tracer. Now, I've seen some people say that, you know, this doesn't fix Anna's key issue. And honestly, yeah, I would agree. Anna's key issue being that Mercy's currently just a better healer. But honestly, that's more Mercy's issue than Anna's issue, if that makes sense. You shouldn't really be trying to balance it around. Oh, well, we need to make Anna as powerful as Resurrect when Resurrect is clearly not working as it should be. Resurrect, even Jeff says, is still behaving more like an ultimate ability. It feels in terms of power more like an ultimate ability than it does an actual normal ability. The fact that you can use it every 30 seconds kind of speaks to that, considering you generally have an ultimate maybe once every sort of minute and a half-ish, especially on a hero like Mercy. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a problem, right? At the end of the day, I think they're still going to have a really hard time. Jeff did make another very nice post, I think, which says that Mercy's core aspect, so I talked about this on stream a little bit, and to me it's a very important idea, which is uh, what makes a hero iconic. So, for example, Widowmaker will always be a sniper. Um, Mercy's always going to be a healer, and basically, but to me, a core part of Mercy's identity was always the resurrect. You know, her tagline is, heroes never die. When you think of Mercy, you think of heroes never die, you think of the resurrect, and you think of um, the healing beams, and, you know, Guardian Angel and stuff like that. You know, all that sort of iconography is very core to Mercy's idea. But Jeff did make a post saying that the core idea to them of Mercy is in her healing and not so much in her resurrect. So that to me says that they are not afraid of dialing down the resurrect in a huge manner, basically. Making sure that the resurrect falls on the back burner um, just to make sure that her healing output remains untouched. Basically, the healing is the, the enshrined concept that Mercy sort of revolves around, not the resurrect. And that's actually quite important because that means that res can be nerfed to hell and back, basically, without sort of the developers feeling like they're stepping on Mercy's toes too much. It's a tricky one, it's a tricky one to balance. Resurrect is extremely powerful. I could do an entire video going into like data and just sort of showing you graphs. I've drawn them on stream numerous times about how Resurrect sort of affects the power curve of a team and how you get an instantaneous sort of pickup while the enemy team often expends resources to get a kill. So basically Resurrect undoes all of that. Anyway, I also mentioned that I'm going to be talking about BlizzCon. I am leaving for BlizzCon in about 12 hours time, actually, from when this is being recorded, so that sort of times it out for you. And I just wanted to sort of give my own little mindless speculation. I know people occasionally ask me, you know, what do you expect at BlizzCon? Uh, I'm expecting a new short, I'm expecting a new hero. Um, that the short will probably include the hero. I imagine this is going to become something of a tradition. Although, knowing Blizzard, they probably won't be afraid to break that tradition if necessary. But I am ex definitely expecting a short. I will be a sh stunned and astounded if we don't get an animated short of some sort. And I'm expecting a uh, new hero, new map as well would be very nice, but... I'm not going to hold my breath. What I really want out of BlizzCon is, like, I want to hear the panels, and I want to hear Jeff and a couple of the others talking about their plans going forward and how to address some of the big issues in competitive, and how to address some of the issues that, you know, the community as a whole is facing, because these are the things that I really care about at this point. These are the things that I really, really sort of want to see fixed and developed, because at the moment, 
And, you know, I mentioned this in the last video, and it sort of all boils down. Um, Io Starks, a friend of mine, did a very good video. Co like, he's a coach. He does some analytical and educational content alongside Overwatch as well. And he did a very good video about, you know, where he feels the problem comes from. And to me, it all comes from the fact that Blizzard treats the player with kid gloves. They treat the player, they're, like, they're afraid of um, punishing the player. They're afraid of saying to the player, you're doing something wrong here. You're not doing something, you're doing something harmful, you're doing something incorrect. Um, so, you know, locking Hanzo in every single game is an example of doing something probably harmful to the game as a whole and harmful to your teammates, but the player's never told he can't do that. Same with locking in Symmetra every single game. Uh, IO Starks went more to the direction of, you know, the player is never told you know, they're performing badly and they're never told that they are being, you know, that their, their DPS is, for example, subpar or they're tanking isn't working or whatever they're never actually informed that they just get to see you know medals and if you're playing dps and you have a medal well congratulations you're competing with like three other people anyway usually so it's not that big a deal and there's a lot of psychology that goes into it all but at the end of the day the problem exists right the overwatch can be frustrating more than it's fun quite often and that is sad that that is a sad factor to me it all comes down to blizzard just need to make a decision on like the nature of one tricks not swapping and poor teamwork how they're going to treat poor teamwork are they going to start removing competitive privilege like, how they're going to shore it up and all that kind of stuff how they're going to make it an actual competitive environment are they going to enforce competitive play styles and competitive rules in that competitive setting or are they just going to let people do whatever i think ryan also did a uh, sent out a very very good tweet in which he just commented that quick play has been a mess and it has been for absolutely ages and fixing quick uh, fixing quick play a little bit might go some steps to fixing ranked as well just to have somewhere where you can still play overwatch but play it in a more re relaxed environment without it being too relaxed and again it's very hard to fix that very very difficult to make that work you either have to find ways to really incentivize victory, which, you know, loot boxes don't really do that anymore, or you have to find ways to, I don't know, punish people who are being disruptive, but can you really do that in quick play? Does that really work? Hard to say. Other than that, people tend to ask, you know, do you want a new support, a new tank, a new DPS? Uh, no new DPS is kind of needed. I'd rather see the, the current stock of DPS. And the thing that people, when people say, like, do you want a new support? The number one argument I hear for people who say, oh, I think the game should have a new support is usually numbers. It's usually, oh, well, there's only four supports to pick from, right? And there's a ton of DPS options. That's always annoyed me. I don't, I don't really get on board with that argument. I don't think that you should, like, you know... That line of thinking leads you down the line of, well, we have Mercy, and now we have Nursy, and we have Hersey, and Fursy, right? And, like, just ink bloating the roster just for the sake of it, just to make sure that, oh, well, you know, that the healers need to have so many options available to them as well. Doesn't really work for me. We, we kind of have, a, you know, a... A variety of options available too, as you have sort of the direct, consistent healing of Mercy with the Resurrect. You have the less consistent but more powerful healing output and control options of Ana. You have the debuff and the healing over time of Zenyada and the damage output of Zenyada. And then finally, you have the sort of auras and mobility and sort of team-oriented healing of Lucio. So you have like these four very distinct healing archetypes. Um, to me, the, the sort of the missing healing archetypes would be something that provides barriers to others, so that you could argue that Zarya kind of does that. Symmetra used to occupy that slot as well. Back in an old design, it was kind of considered overpowered, so imagine you're not going to see too much, otherwise it'll start stepping on Zarya's shoes and sort of become more of a tank. Uh, or something that just puts like healing zones down on the floor. We've played WoW, like light wells and that kind of idea. Something that puts, you know, is very zonally oriented or paints the floor. Uh, pla Splatoon style. Uh, Platoon style. Jesus, something else entirely. Splatoon style, where you just paint the floor down and people can heal up in that area, for example. You can do some interesting things with that maybe and have like a buff area as well that speed boosts people. Things like that. To me, the big thing is speed boost. I want to sort of circle back to speed boost because Lucio currently has the monopoly on it. It is a very powerful ability. It's very, very key to a lot of how high level play works. Uh, less so these days because metrics become more... Um, sort of stable or not stable stable is the wrong word like tanky immobile durable durability is sort of the, the key thing here this is why we're seeing these so-called cheese comps sort of bubble up because not moving and just being very durable and having the res just makes you very powerful at the moment so that's sort of why these comps are very very strong at the end of the day what i want out of blizzcon is just the the feeling of the breath of life into overwatch you know just something that will just give the game a little bit of a kick uh, and just to give it a little bit of an extra 
I don't know, a little bit of extra zing, a little bit of an extra boost. I'm looking forward also to the World Cup, of course, cheering for Team UK, going up against Team Sweden. Uh, hopefully they'll do us proud. Team Sweden should be pretty good opponents now. They weren't looking too strong in the qualifiers, but I imagine they sort of leveled up a bit. While Team UK, I don't think, have quite leveled up at the same pace, I think that the level that we are at is still strong enough to beat them. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Hopefully we can scoop up second place. That's sort of the dream, that's the goal, is to try and go for second. We're under no illusions, South Korea will go ahead and crush absolutely everyone because they're, they're just better and they've been training harder they have probably better practice partners and all that jazz what i'm also looking forward to is any announcements and well, any and all news on the overwatch league i want to see how the overwatch league sort of gets started and i might start ramping up content just covering the overwatch league very heavily and try and sort of get into that sort of thing and just sort of doing that on the back burner and making that very vested interest for me because uh, i enjoy watching well i enjoy watching overwatch news i enjoy watching overwatch esports and it would be nice to have this very centralized space to operate in as a content content creator where we can just really sort of get to grips with what the, what is happening in the Overwatch League and why you should be interested in it, why you should be excited in it, and all that kind of stuff, and how it's relevant to also your play in the game of Overwatch. Otherwise, guys, there will probably be a news video as well, or like a, a coffee break when I come back. I might try and record it when I get home, which will be Monday, next Monday. Um... I'll try and get that recorded for you guys and uploaded as soon as I can, just when I get back. I'll probably be very tired after a long flight. Flying to America is always very draining. I'm dreading it a little bit, but I'm sure it'll be fun. I've got Mario Odyssey to play on the plane, for example, uh, so that should be a good time. Otherwise, guys, thank you for listening all the way to the end. Let me know what you're expecting from BlizzCon. Let me know if you're also worried about Mercy. I, I'm sure you are, but let me know more about BlizzCon. I want to know what you guys' predictions are for BlizzCon, what you're expecting, what you're hoping for to hear, or what you're hoping to hear from the developers at BlizzCon as well. Thank you for watching to the end. I've been Josh, one voice amongst many. This has been a very brief coffee break, and I'll see you guys soon. Toodles. <laughs> Right.